I'm Dave Kassler, call sign KE0OG, here with something a bit out of the ordinary. While admittedly today isn't April 1st, I thought we could still have some fun. There's so much talk of fake news these days. With this video, I'm announcing a series called Fake Amateur Radio News, or FARN. And here it comes. This is FARN. Coming directly to you from a secret location in the Western United States, this is Dave Kassler, Chief Correspondent for Fake Amateur Radio News, bringing you updates on secret backroom machinations, conspiracies, and stories to warn us of those who would lead us astray. This is FARN. In our lead story, President Trump, whose Twitter account has been closed by Russian hackers, vows to keep communicating directly with the public. Instead of tweets, the president showed reporters a gold-plated J-38 key that he'll be using to send his pithy comments via Morse code on the 40-meter band. Listen for him around 7050 kilohertz. So that you'll know it really is the president, his CW tweets will be sent with a pronounced chirp. This is Farn. As more people join the ranks of amateur radio, the ARRL's flagship publication, QST, continues to have more and more pages. The League announced today that from April, QST will be shipped with hardbound covers. This will affect printing and postage costs, so the League is now using the pharmaceutical pricing model, and your membership will now be a screaming $921 per year. Payment plans will be available for up to 36 months if you have good credit. And for the indigent, the price will be cut in half. This is FARN. In a shock development, Chinese amateur equipment manufacturer Baofeng has announced a partnership with the Japanese company ICOM to be called iFang. The first product for the joint venture will be a new HF rig dubbed the Splatter and it will be sold directly from China on both eBay and Amazon for 199 US dollars, including shipping. On the transmitter side, to save costs, needless spurious signal filters that have been forced on hoodwinked amateurs worldwide for so long will be dropped. This has been announced as a major step forward because when you're transmitting on 80 meters, you're simultaneously transmitting on 40, 20, and 10 meters. The splatter will incorporate one of the ubiquitous dongle receivers. The input filter for the dongle is so broadband that you'll be able to hear responses on 80, 40, 20, and 10 meters simultaneously, thus combining the best of all ham bands in a unique frequency diversity reception scheme. In a sneak attempt to wean U.S. amateurs away from their Kenwoods and Yesus, iFeng will have partner ICOM write the Splatter's five-page manual in actual English. As with many Chinese-originated radios, the Splatter can transmit on any HF frequency without modification, and their new advertising material prominently shows the ability to reply to WWV on its own frequency. When concern was raised that some people might use the splatter to transmit outside the ham band, Ifeng replied through a spokeswoman that no one would be so stupid as that. This is FARN. Outgoing FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler, with a stroke of the pen, eliminated the amateur extra license. Why do we need an extra license class, he asked. All these years we've put up with this unneeded extra license class, Given the mandate to reduce the federal budget, we've got to cut all extra expenditures. Chairman Wheeler's action means that now no one can use the frequencies previously reserved for the amateur extras. The ARRL has announced they'll study this new development. It will likely ask that the abandoned frequencies be given to technician class operators. This is FARN. And in our final story for the day, well-embedded moles at the HARP facility in Alaska, site of previous strange, unexplained experiments, 
report that the supposedly dismantled site is being rebuilt ostensibly under the control of the University of Alaska. Those who have visited the facility report that, in fact, the ionospheric heating mission was bunk. Rather, all along, it has been transmitting magnetogravitational waves in an attempt to communicate with other civilizations out there. Although spokesmen state that anything so stupid as aliens is ridiculous, it was noted by our sharp-eyed reporter that the HARP job application asks each applicant if they are a resident alien. This is Farn. There's your fake amateur radio news for this week. How much of this is true? Zero. And that's the way it isn't. Join us again for fake amateur radio news. Due to ongoing inflation, I must say to you, until next time, 74.